This video is brought to you by Incogni. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire Upper Echelon community. All right, people have been asking me for video game related topics, and yes, it feels like all I do lately is talk about AI, but today I'd like to discuss the implications of an algorithm called YOLO V8, YOLO version 8, which is an image recognition machine learning program, which I believe will radically and abruptly begin changing the landscape of online competitive video games. The truth is, this video could have been made about two years ago. I wasn't very quick on the draw here with this one, but I remember seeing it back then, loosely covering it, or rather looking into it for myself at least, and thinking, at least on a personal level, yeah, this is going to cause a huge problem. But flash forward today, I think it's going to completely redefine what it means to play even a competitive video game, in particular first-person shooters, because the danger here isn't that AI will somehow outright exterminate us, at least not soon, the danger is that AI will just surpass us in every conceivable way, thereby destroying the very fabric of modern society. Call me a doomer, and maybe the advent of new dangerous technology can be controlled by the advent of even more dangerous technology with guardrails and regulations and oversight boards and basic morals, but for today, I'll try to set all of that aside and just give an honest, objective look at where the future of competitive video games might be headed based on the evidence I see all around me. Here we go. What is YOLO? YOLO is a pop culture term meaning you only live once, but it's also a moniker for the you only live once image detection algorithm developed by Joseph Redman and Ali Farhadi at the University of Washington in 2015. The program itself has been through multiple different iterations, version 2 in 2016, version 3 in 2018, v4 in 2020, v6 in 2022, and now we're on version 8, which is basically just a couple weeks old at this point. YOLO is an interesting name and an interesting program, but it's probably best for me to just play it on screen. This is what it does. In essence, YOLO is just an object identification and tracking tool, but the implications of that in a world of modern video games are catastrophic. It doesn't really hit home just what this will and already does mean in gaming when the tech is being used on traffic footage, for example. So here it is on Counter-Strike, or here it is maybe on Valorant, or even for a slightly different demonstration, here it is on a regular football game. Now, of course, this technology has a multitude of positive applications as well. It can be used in the medical industry, weather prediction, content analysis of all kinds, even in law enforcement. Actually, whether or not you see that as a positive is entirely up to you. I'm not here to say how you should feel about the world of surveillance getting a massive upgrade right now, but you get the point. The tech itself is obviously just a tool. Some applications will be positive, some negative, but the implications for gaming in particular, in my opinion, are nothing short of catastrophic. Today's video sponsor is Incogni. Heartfelt message here. Lately, I've really struggled with a shift in methodology. I only want to work with brands that respect me as a creator and allow me true creative and verbal freedom. Incogni, owned by the same company as Surfshark, is one of those companies that respects my words and my vision. I sincerely thank them for that. Incogni is all about online privacy and data protection, something I'm getting more and more into lately. Every single day, your data is at risk of being sold by third-party brokers or accessed without your knowledge and data breaches. Some people don't care, but I certainly do, and for anyone who wants to prevent that kind of thing, today's video sponsor can help. Your personal information is everywhere, absolutely everywhere, and not just in the archives of companies you know about or signed up for on purpose, but other data firms as well, who then sell it all across the internet. For everyday users, it's a nearly impossible task to take any action because there are hundreds of these data brokers, and it's a lengthy process to contact them, fight objections, and get something removed. However, Incogni does all of this for you quickly and easily. The process is extremely simple. I've done it myself. Sign up for the website, give them specific legal permission to work on your behalf, and let them know what kind of information they'll be having removed. After that, sit back and watch them work for you. Aggregating this kind of service lets them do what otherwise would be an all-consuming and nearly impossible task for individuals, which is why so many people have so much information online that they never even know about. The first 100 people to click the link down below in the description and use code ECHELON at checkout will get 60% off their subscription to Incogni. Again, link down below and promo code ECHELON for the first 100 viewers who use it to get 60% off their subscription. Big thank you to Incogni for embracing my freedom and sponsoring the channel. So where do we start in order to fully and completely understand what this will mean for competitive gaming? My opinion, we should start here. This is, or was rather, a website created by User101 called UserVision. And UserVision is basically patient zero for an unstoppable digital cheating epidemic. UserVision was originally being sold for Call of Duty in particular, and this is what it did. Advertised as any platform and undetectable anytime, anywhere, user vision would identify targets with machine learning and eliminate them with video game controls. That sounds good, but what could possibly separate this from a multitude of existing cheat engines that do that and have done that for a very long time, and why on earth should anyone care about it? Simply put, these cheats fundamentally really are undetectable. 
They can be detected in some circumstances, very niche circumstances, mainly if the individual using them is irresponsible enough to dial them up to the nth degree, a strength that is outside the bounds of actual human potential, really is what it is. But what if someone were smart enough not to do that? Spoiler alert, they are, they have been, I've talked to a couple of them who have done it, and they will continue to be with increasingly frequent occurrence. Here's what I mean by that, and I'll try to go fast, because this part is sort of boring, but necessary to understand the topic. Average human response times, as per humanbenchmark.com, which has apparently recorded over 81 million reaction time clicks, if you listen to them, is roughly between 270 and 290 milliseconds. Seen here, and graphed on a bell curve, slow end reaction times are in the low 300s, and fast reaction times are in the 160s and 170s. Even better, when particularly examining the world of esports, which is relevant for today's topic, research from Ohio Northern University suggests, with a documented set of methods, that esports players possess a reaction time roughly between 160 and 180 milliseconds for certain tests, as low as 140 in some cases, varying by test type, of course, and that's fast. Very, very fast. But equally as important as the average is the underlying extreme. Some people, whether by training, persistence, or some kind of genetic superiority even, are able to have a reaction time that borders on 100 milliseconds. It's an incredibly small number of people, but there are human beings out there, and esports players in particular, that can achieve something like 120 millisecond reaction times, or even 115, 110. Again, this is an incredibly difficult thing to do, often requiring the most advanced hardware a person can buy in addition to physical dexterity, but it's certainly possible, and therein lies the problem. The difference between average and esports, in gaming in particular, is monumental. It's measured in the form of milliseconds, but don't let that fool you, because it's really the difference between winning and losing. Highly competitive first-person shooters, as well as other game types, many of them, but shooters are obviously the most immediately threatened video game genre, demand almost perfect reaction times and shot placement from users in order to achieve victory. Under those win conditions, skill matters, but the difference between an average player and a competitive professional player is extreme. The difference is actually so large that an average player in, say, gold division or silver division or god forbid bronze division for any given shooter will likely never beat a challenger tier or a champion tier or grandmaster tier player, whatever it is the game decides to call them, even 1% of the time. And this is, of course, a function of many separate superiority benchmarks like memorization of the maps, positioning, etc., kit knowledge, all these different things, but one of the most important, arguably probably the most important, aiming and reaction time. With that out of the way, what's the connection though? Well, we've already shown the connection because it's user vision. Using an image recognition algorithm, whether it was a specific version of YOLO or something else, I'm not really sure, user vision was able to identify targets, track, shoot, and kill them on any device in an undetectable way. The method used here is also pretty simple and only requires about 200 US dollars at the moment of making this video. The gist of it, without turning this video into a guide of sorts, which would only exacerbate the problem, the gist of it is that users can pipe their gameplay through a capture card, use a secondary computer, and then route input commands through something like a Titan 2. This makes it so that input commands originating from an AI, such as aiming or shooting at targets that resemble enemies, appears to be coming from an HID, maybe a controller, also known as a human interface device. In no uncertain terms, this makes them either impossible or nearly impossible to detect on a hardware level, which leaves a singular mechanism of detecting the cheats through unrealistic results. Detailed in Ars Technica a while ago, Riot Games in particular responded to this threat by emphasizing that superhuman feats are a dead giveaway, no shit Sherlock, and that a joint program of artificial and human detection methods have let them continue to enforce fair play in Valorant. Of course they'll say that, our game is fair, despite the existence of what are, in essence, functionally undetectable cheats. That's all well and good, but let's get a better grasp of how the problem has grown. Similar to a viral outbreak, the issues begin with patient zero, and then they spread. For today, patient zero is user 101. I don't know if that's the actual patient zero for this kind of thing, but it's definitely one of the more well-known instances where it cropped up, and then some other things happened, but we'll get to that in a minute. Given the nature of the problem and the sheer amount of money at stake here, the problem wasn't exactly flying under the radar. Activision Blizzard, the publisher behind Call of Duty, which is one of the most valuable entertainment properties in human history, almost immediately became aware that user vision had cropped up, leading to decisive and immediate action. Activision Blizzard, in the grand scheme of legality and court proceedings, acted with lightning speed. I want to stress this. Proportional to how they react to other things in the business world, this was the equivalent of a blitz, a stomp out. As fast as they could, they acted with as much force as they could to shut the website down that was distributing user vision. 
In place of the actual cheats themselves, suddenly there was an apology, and then eventually there was nothing. Activision Blizzard acted incredibly fast again, as we've said, but much like a dangerous pathogen, the spread could not be fully contained. If you browse the internet now, there are innumerable guides, walkthroughs, and technical explanations of exactly what this is, exactly how to do it so that anyone could probably set it up, how to train the imaging software yourself explicitly, how to replicate the effects in almost any comparable video game, and more. The truth of the matter is, people are using this now. More of them are using it every single day, and the companies behind the games that they target are incapable of controlling the problem. In essence, this is the death of public matchmaking competitive fairness, and I know that's a super dramatic thing to say, I get that, people accuse me of being hyperbolic all the time, but think about it, and really do please think about it. If these cheats are truly undetectable, which I posit that they are, if a player does not dial them up to an inhuman level and therefore remains beneath the radar, it would mean that anyone using them can reframe their current reaction time to a near-perfect 140-ish milliseconds, aka they can jump to a competitive esports tier undetectably for a couple hundred dollars. That destroys the very fabric of legitimate competition. If all you have to do is control where the character runs as a secondary computer undetectably mows down targets with the speed and efficiency of a professional gamer, the standard of play naturally starts to rise. Matches you would have won because you were just superior to the other player become losses, as the number of players using undetectable machine learning increases, meaning that more and more you will be playing against machines, not people, who are better than they should be through the augmentation and kind of the meshed skill set of machine learning and human control. Not good enough to get caught, mind you, just good enough to start winning more games. If they dialed it up all the way, they would crush everyone in their path, as is true already with most cheat engines. But that right there is how AI will destroy the things we love, and we're kind of just sitting here defending it. Think about it. The only way to beat that is to have highly, highly invasive anti-cheat, because you need to detect the problem before you can ever solve it. You need access to not only a person's entire machine, but also any connected HID devices, just to detect if these types of cheating methods are even being used in any number of the other devices connected to your computer. That level of infiltration, however, comes with very large security risks, and drawbacks, and performance problems, most likely, and baggage. I would propose, in my opinion, that Activision Blizzard knew this. They understood the danger, and they reacted accordingly, as fast as they could, but the damage is already done. YOLO exists, with more advanced versions being released at progressively shortening intervals. The mechanisms needed to plug it into games and train it at home yourself with nothing but a laptop are out there, and every single day they get more and more popular. Video game companies pretend that they can detect these problems or fight back against them, and maybe right now they can, to a degree, but we are currently staring down the barrel of a problem where the weapon has been invented before the protection. In this case, the weapon hasn't even been invented, it's been progressively refined into a consumer-level cheap and well-oiled machine, spreading further every day, while the tools to fight back and create a truly level playing field just don't exist and no one even knows how to make them. AI isn't going to wipe us out, at least not yet. It just might destroy the things we love. Instead of logging into a game you're pretty good at and getting a triple kill, you'll be logging into an instance of AI-controlled pseudo-humans, where the human player exists in the most minimal capacity possible, which then emulates a nearly benchmark-perfect example of human performance, far outpacing the abilities of an average player. And if they go too far, yeah, they, they will get banned. There will be detection on that level, and people will always take it too far. Dialing the program up to its maximum potential would obviously surpass anything even remotely achievable by humans, but... Not everyone is that stupid. Plenty of people out there have already begun using this, and will continue to do so for that matter, making it harder and harder for legitimate players to compete. And sure, there might be a solution when it comes to invasive anti-cheat, but that's a trade-off by itself, and one that none of us should ever take lightly or probably even have to make. But we do. Bottom line, your video games will never be fair again, at least most of them. That ship already sailed, it's just a matter of how well the publishers can fight back and how far the problem will actually spread. I know, I always trend towards hyperdramatic doomer topics, and maybe all of this is completely unfounded. Maybe I'm a nutcase and the fear is completely irrational, it's going to usher in a grand utopia, but I find myself concerned about the very fabric of competitive gaming right now, because the desire by humans to replace their own abilities with computerized perfection is an unchecked, rapidly emerging threat that will continue to grow and will have serious consequences for a large number of industries. It's a lot to think about, I know, but that's it. Quick update for the most loyal viewers, and this is one of the parts of the video that I'm most excited about. There has been an improvement to the video bounties. I'm not calling them subliminal frame giveaways anymore. That's evolved. I'm calling them bounties. And this one for today is hidden in three different parts. 
This modification is part of a broader initiative to increase watch time on the channel because just listening to it, I'm pretty sure punishes me in the YouTube algorithm. Like I need people to watch the content and be scrolling through it. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make the channel more popular here. Just bear with me. So it's part of a broader initiative to increase watch time that benefits me while providing entertainment and excitement to viewers. And it's being programmed by sick or sick, the cat on GitHub. All of his information is linked down below. I've worked with him on a variety of topics. He's helped elevate the quality of the channel of the videos that I produce on the channel. And it's just, it's really fun right now. And we're having a lot of fun doing this. He's gone above and beyond to make this entire project a reality. So please do go check out his work and understand that he's the architect here. I'm helping of course, with the, the hiding of the keys and all these different things. But anyway, just if you want to, there are three different hidden decryption codes. You find them in the video. They're hidden somewhere in the video. Go to the GitHub repo, which is linked down below at the very bottom of the description. Do what it says there. I mean, some of it's, you know, you, you have to do some work. It'll spit out a real code and that code can be redeemed. Well, same as last time. I won't hide that. That's an Amazon gift code. The last one was $250 and it was comparatively quite easy. This one is way, way harder, but also way more fun for people that care to participate in a sort of upper echelon ARG in the making. And so it's slightly more. It's not a bunch more, but it's more. Other links down below as well, merch, social media, the video sponsor, of course, some YouTube alternatives, locals and Patreon support there is very much appreciated. Also channel memberships. I mean, that's something that YouTube provides and I get much more from that than I do from ad revenue. So anyway, a bunch of ways that you can pay for it. And some of that is going to go back into this ARG concept that we're building out, but whatever, I'll cut it there. Um, more projects coming soon in the future. No more rambling as always. Thank you all for watching and have a nice night.